That show was fucking great. Dude, the principle of an oil change is the most repulsive thought ever. <laughs> Just that, dude. I was like, I I'm, was I'm crazy for that. I'm dude. good. I'm I'll, like, I'll no. get cut. <laughs> I'll get cut from the <laughs> I'm like, yeah, team. Yeah, fuck this. Like. Well, what, what about this? How much money would it take for you to get an oil change? Oh, dude. You're going to have to pay me some. 35000 Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're have to pay me Is some that what the price was on the last one? 35000 <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. You're going to have to pay me, like, because what was. What, Dad was trying to be a pro football player for some shit, right? Yeah, he, I need that beginning sum of money for me to take a fucking tube up my dick, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> $35,000. Test my memory. There are a lot of theories, leading theories right now in neuroscience that dictate that our brain, like the memories, our emotions, are very heavily tied to physical structuring in our brains. So if you produce an exact replica of someone's brain, like basically, you know, when you transfer that data, if you perfectly reproduce their nervous system, they'll have those memories whether or not they're that person. Wow. Yeah, like, like that's one of the big, like, you know, <sighs> there's like a debate among physicists right now whether or not you can digitize consciousness. And a lot, like one of the biggest questions is it seems like all of this is tied to physically to the brain. How do we account for that? Like, do we have to, to do that? Do we have to physically take your brain out? Like, can we separate you from your body? Is that even possible? And like going off of that, like to give you an idea, I mean, like, that's why, like we were talking a little earlier before we started filming about like how recovering from depression and PTSD, like the things that have been shown to be effective are things that actually force you to form new neural connections because those are physical phenomenon in your brain. Right. Like those are physically formed neural connections that are making your brain process emotions a certain way or connect things to a certain memory. So are those same neural pathways and the same chemical biological makeup that you have in your mind, is that going to be recreated just identical? And then you're right. Is that the same person? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> like, for real. That's, and that's like one of the biggest questions. You're one of the friends who's had like the biggest impact in my life. Thanks. And I think what you made me realize is that I could be mindful of like emotions. Like whenever I, whenever something like hits me, like say like anger, like let's say an external condition arises that pisses me off. Like you kind of made me realize that I can act on that, or I can choose to just chill the fuck out. Yeah, basically, just ah, fuck it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's just I don't know. For me, people really don't understand. Like I'm lazy, but I'm not lazy at the same time. I'm like lazy in the aspect that I'm not gonna put in any extra effort for something that's not worth my while. You've you've mastered the art of like not giving a fuck. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I'm just. I mean, I get bothered and stuff, but. Like you said, you analyze your life. I have enabled myself to just sit back and really think about it before I like let myself get all worked up and pissed off about it. The idea that someone's better than someone else is because they're a different color is trash. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But the whole exposure of social media makes it, you have to face it. Like there are people who are racist, but they get exposed in social media. So the stigma of being racist is a lot more severe now than what it was like 20 years ago. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. Like if you're a racist and you get caught on camera saying dumb racist shit, then that's you. Like you just got crucified. That's everybody. way more of a Exactly. Backlash. So people who are racist are going to keep their mouth shut. Yeah, they're going to keep that shit right to themselves. Yeah, exactly. Or they'll go hardcore and be like, listen up. I don't care if you don't like me or not. I'm going to use this social media platform to get on. Because like the Westboro Baptist Church people, uh -huh. the ones who like protest military funerals, uh -huh. they're, on, they're on social media. They're on, they have a Twitter. And it's crazy. When Michael Sam got drafted by the Rams, they went off. Is he, is they he went the first crazy. NFL player who came out like openly gay? Mm -hmm. okay. First openly gay NFL draftee. Yep. Wow. That was Michael Sam. I'm and pretty he, sure. They yeah. started bashing him, really. They were bashing the hell out of him. The minute he came out... They were they were on his ass. You're right. Like like the, the next thing they would turn to is maybe gay people or whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's just what can I find? You yeah. Know I mean? Why why can I hate you? I Dude, that place. I swear on my life, that place had paranormal activity. I swear that place was so creepy. We walked in this room and you can ask. Well, I, well just us two. <laughs> 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 we were both there. Yeah. yeah but well. Dude, like you, you walk in this uh, because we were we were pretty much just breaking into a house, like a vacant house. That uh, I don't even know how we figured out about this place, but the the story was there was an old slave house that was being used on this like farm, and based so we we walk in this this main room and the family room, 
So I, I didn't feel like a creepy vibe anywhere in this house except this family room. All it was was, like he said, just so it, was, a chair. it was one chair in a corner with a doll on it. That was it. And that it was, was, a that was the doll. only. Th- that was the, and that was the only thing. Mm. In the in the fucking house, basically. Mm. I don't think any of us went upstairs. There there wasn't upstairs. I don't think any of us went upstairs. I don't remember. I I don't think we did. I think okay. we stayed on the main level and we're like, nah, I'm good. Besides the, the dungeon. <laughs> yeah. Besides we're like, oh of course the cellar, why don't we go? My whole thing that is this like going inside of stuff like that, like there are some like things that could like follow you home and get attached to you and stuff like that. Dude. I was wondering like if somebody would have taken that doll and taken it back, I'm like, what if like, like, there's, I don't know, like, what if they're, they were attached to that doll? Mm. Like some Annabelle type shit, dude? Yeah. yeah. They have, so many people have tried to invade Russia. So many people have tried to invade Russia. It has been the downfall of, like, two of the most powerful emperors in world, or in modern world history. Napoleon, okay, it has been the downfall of Napoleon, uh, freaking Kaiser Ma- Kaiser Maxwell or no Kaiser Wilhelm, the one that was the leader of Germany during World War One, and yeah. Hitler. L- literally, like s- there are like so many military endeavors, like s- wars, just general expansion plans, have ended with "I'm going to go invade Russia," and it doesn't work. Right, because that's where we're, that's really where Hitler fucked up. Like, yes, like everybody likes to say, like, it, uh, what, what's the famous Hitler quote, like. Whenever the whenever the uh, Japanese bombed us on Pearl Harbor Day, uh, the, Hitler said something like, "Don't." Before he did it, he said something like, "Don't awake the sleeping beast," referring to America. But like where he really messed up was trying to invade Russia. And wasn't it the climate that played such a role then? Well, it's always what played such a role because Russia is oh, Russia has pretty much always used the same tactic. Uh huh. Like, and I mean, they used they used the same tactic with. Napoleon, Kaiser Wilhelm, and Hitler, which is, as soon as they start advancing, fight enough battles to keep pulling them into your territory, uh-huh. but as you go, burn everything behind you. As you give up ground, don't leave anything behind for them to take. Any resources they could possibly use. They destroyed. Really? Okay. Like, Russia basically went scorched earth policy on itself. Bionic. <laughs> so if you have a bionic arm, does that mean you no longer jerk off? Like you 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 give yourself hand jobs? Because oh, it's no, not I, you. I ain't touching that. You're not touching that. Okay, I can't. No, touch I, I, just I, give, I have a normal. I have, like, I, have have a, just, I have my right arm, man. It feels like someone else is doing it. <laughs> nah, dude. I'm going. I'm like, going right arm. What if? What if? Okay. What if you have you're, like you're a malfunction? Right Hell yeah. You got training. You got to think, man. You got to think. What if you have a malfunction while you are doing that? Yeah, you can, <laughs> yeah, yeah like, like a malfunction hat, or just like like you know you try to uncut, unlike grab, you know, try to let go of it, and you just you can't. What you know, if like, someone hacks your system? Hey, exactly. <laughs> Biggest fear. It's weird because everybody in my family is afraid of clowns. Really? So I think it's just like at this you think point, it's genetic. I don't know. I wouldn't say genetic. I'd say it's just like ingrained in my psyche. Because right. I remember in the fifth grade carnival, I went to Twin Chimneys Elementary. We had a fifth grade carnival for every single year. And finally, it was our turn, the fifth graders, to have it. And yeah. Ronald McDonald was sitting at this desk, a little baby desk, signing autographs. And I just came from a cakewalk. Okay. And I'm, you know, walking down with my friend Ryan. And all of a sudden, I see Ronald McDonald signing shit. And I stop. I was terrified. At that point, I had never seen him before other than just on posters. So he stops signing whatever he's signing and sees me out of the corner of his eye, turns, and smiles. And he's got these brown-ass teeth. Like the grossest grill you could ever imagine. And I got so scared. I hit him really hard. No! And then I ran away. Yeah, back to the cakewalk and just ducked under the teacher's desk. And just <laughs> cowered. So, so like a school a, event. 10 minutes, yeah. It was a school event. They got really pissed off. You decked him, no way. I did, hit him right in the face. So they, they got pissed off, like, you assume you got caught? They got really mad at me because wow. I punched Ron McDonald in the face. There's always, 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 like, aliens. It's the fun belief. It's the fun thing to be excited for. I'm believe. Like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> I'm like, how is every unidentified flying object an alien? Like every single one. Like, don't get me wrong. I find it difficult to believe they were the only ones, and like maybe a handful of them have been, but like every single time. <laughs> oh, I couldn't agree more. Immediately, everyone's like, "Yo, what the fuck, alien?" <laughs> <laughs> Just like, dude, no. I guess just that that excitement's like overriding them. I don't know. Yeah, the, the rationale is just not fucking there, dude. Quantum computing going off of that, 
when you look at like fundamental particles, the number of states they can occupy greatly changes. Like there are some there are some models of physics where like the most the smallest, most fundamental fundamental particles to our universe have almost infinite outcomes for what they can become. So think about a computing system based on instead of this or that at one data point, uh -huh. you have like 26 different things you can put into that one data point. And think about how much more the realm of possibility. Yes. Wow. Like that's one of the things that's going to make AI a lot more realistic. Like, and I don't mean like a, something we've programmed to like have response. I mean something that is probably, honestly, going to surpass us in the next hundred years. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Like, like quantum computing is how quantum computing is like how the robot future happens. So